whatever hi how's it in the name of christ it's your girl cranky i was actually planning on recording on the other phone uh and then i made a decision to record here <coughs> let us hope for the best <coughs> mm -mm, sorry it's my iphone i hope you're good hope you're stellar hope you're peachy i hope you're in a neat little bunch hope you're not like dwelling in a psychosis my other phone when i was starting to like record on it it just decided to go zombie like dead on a sister so whatever check out the acne what's good it uh, looks like my iphone is the go-to phone going forward in the future not really sure how that's gonna work out but let's just let time tell there will be lots and lots of speech lags but we take them in our stride because at least the audio is on par hooking up a wig uh kicking it killing it never mind the wig but wearing fake makeup because that's just what we do in the kingdom of heaven why is it so dark in here it doesn't matter uh anyway guys you know what um no that's all i'm gonna say uh beastly humans in the occult no no not gonna do it push me over the edge as much as you want it's not gonna happen we're not doing it we're not kicking a bucket mm -mm. we are also not twasaring joining the occult garnering for ourselves a couple of dollars through satan eh? that's not happening you're gonna have to try another strategy anyway this is a vest so sometimes i feel like i'm naked so let's just like cover this area lest uh, i should be troubling or whatever part 13 that's the last part i was on okay so i'm gonna be doing edits while you hang 10 over there chill max out relax zip on a pina colada uh, i'm doing edits well okay but like my computer takes forever in a day to do anything at all so uh yeah uh don't distract me please i have a lot to say guys you know what nah, hallelujah amen what's up it is the 26th of september yeah the uh date of all of these anomalies commencing in my life was sometime in june or july maybe of 2014 so let's give it an arbitrary date like i don't know let's say 17th of june was when all this nonsense slept my life 2014 but guess what date it is now 26 september of 2023 do the mathematics i think that's like nine years and i'm still standing christian persecution for nine whole years and you think that you're gonna pull out some kind of rabbit out of your random hat oh magician and make me do a strange thing when i've been doing amazing alarmingly eccentric things like literally for almost a decade cease and desist i'm not going anywhere i just feel as if though how about you cease hostilities against said human individual gawking at you huh you know south africa is in so much denial and south africa here in last the deal it doesn't matter how much denial you're in bottom line is if you're a little bit of a sodom roaming these streets fire and brimstone is gonna fall on you while you're slap bang in the center of your hypocrisy while you're in the center slap bang of your sanctimoniousness and your self-righteousness while south africa you are slap bang in the center of your i don't think so this particular ecosystem is unfamiliar to me this is a biased sample and so therefore this woman's experience up in our neighboring countries and our own nation is anomalous Garabo is different um, she's just like a weird little outlier I'll tell you how you are thinking currently South Africa and you will see the irony of your hypocrisy and stop or not but bottom line is you are like america you are 100 percent on that sodomic slippery slope but i'm going to help you understand why you're on that so sodomic uh, slippery slope okay how you digging the iphone not oh then again i don't get any feedback why because you are uncomfortable about the realities that are walking at you given that you want this to be a cushy environment when it isn't so herein lies the never mind americans but western culture and every so often the gentrified section of africa let's talk mm. when you watch television and you see a suffering struggling gouache yokor riddled young boy with a big fat tummy that is full of air and lack of protein you gaze upon it in the news at the, as the news is covering such a devastating event as this and then you're like oh my this is so pitiful this is so sorry this is such a horrible thing 
And then you go on right ahead to watch Generations. Is that still a thing? Are they still airing that show? Did it ever come to a blistering end sometime? I don't care. I don't know. Because I don't watch South African television anymore. Why? Because it just freaking hurts. Why? Because it's too familiar, too relatable, all these languages can't deal, can't take it. Literally, it's like an injection of something powerfully electric in my neck, causing me a disability. So I don't watch South African television for the very purpose of not seeing any South Africans. I deliberately avoid you. Mmm. Because I'm not trying to get PTSD and a painful nostalgia. Listen. Yeah, you there, chilling, watching Generations after watching a Gwashiyoko riddled child in some part of Africa. Let's say the Horn of Africa. Out here ravaged by famine, but you're in a gentrified section of Africa that doesn't really have such bad cases of Gwashiyoko. And so for those reasons, you think you're totally in a position to act like it's not happening in your backyard. Uh the earth is everybody's backyard but the same way that westerners watch african tv i don't e african events like whatever is going on down here in these streets slathering us with sorrow yeah south africans are watching general other suffering struggling christians or any other human being going through a little bit of a minute the way that you would look at a kwashioko riddled child in somewhere in the horn of africa suffering like no man's business uh, South Africa. I apologize. Oh, believe me, I do. I apologize. You're a fool and you're a hypocrite, and I'm gonna help you understand why. Mm. The thing you've become is a sham. It is detestable. It is despisable. It is worthy of being thrown in a dustbin. And then being forgotten and neglected forever because really and truly who is busy thinking about what's in the dustbin? That's you. You deserve it. Here in last, the Charlize Theron saying that Afrikaans, yes, one of our languages, mm, is a forgotten language only like 44 people are speaking it. Okay, yeah. Charlize Theron was born in South Africa, Benonian, etc. Yes, she is able to be that violently ignorant. Uh, you know why? Because that's just what people do when they leave Africa or when they imagine they're not part of Africa. So there are so many languages across the world that many different cultures speak that are not so popular that they're spoken across multiple continents. These languages, however, are local in a particular geographical location. And so therefore they're not going anywhere in that geographical location. Um, Swahili is spoken largely in like Zimbabwe, Swaziland, etc. But it's not about to become the main language of America or Spain. Same way that Spanish is not about to become the main language of South Africa. But that does not mean that only 44 people are speaking it. It will forever chill in Swaziland and Zimbabwe and certain other parts of Africa. Because those people will continue to proliferate their culture. But when you're ignorant after being gentrified by an immoral country for as many years as Charlie Theron has been gentrified by America. That's what's good. She can easily speak such blasphemies on the rooftop, talking about a nation that God created, and say of them that one of their languages is going to go extinct because only 44 people are speaking it. Literally neglecting to re like, uh, recognize that there are entire families born speaking nothing but Afrikaans. They can't even understand English. Their children are raised up in Afrikaans. And so these kids will keep on speaking it all the way up until their kids speak it and the kids' kids speak it. And pretty much until the rapture and then the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then in heaven, it'll probably still be spoken because the Lord is gathering for himself a great many people from all different kinds of nationalities. And so it's likely that there will be Swahili, Zulu, Afrikaans, Spanish in heaven. I believe that. Only difference is that we're all going to be able to speak all of the languages i do believe that as well mm. but when you have been made naive by a country that has no regard for other people you're gonna speak rubbish like that on the rooftops so charlie's theron is precisely the exact same thing that all other africans have unfortunately become mm. let me not say all other africans let me say all other south africans that are gentrified sitting in a lofty position able to just kind of get from day one to day two and then three and then seven mm. what's going on over there you sanctimonious buffoons hanging out in churches that have absolutely no efficacy nor power to reach heaven hence your country is falling apart you're gonna however in the run-up 
Club 2 speak smack against a what you imagine to be minority group so small that only 44 people are looking at it. Mm. You're going to look at persecuted Christians in your silly country, in your stupid country. Yeah, as just these like one or two or three or five people that are forgettable. And since they are forgettable, um, one day they're going to be extincted out of the human race. Charlize Theron might as well have said that Zulu is that same thing. She can speak Afrikaans. She's from Benoni, for crying out loud. However, she's actually talking about Afrikaans as a language that is one of these days and never going to be seen ever again. Why? Because she moved to America and nobody there is speaking it mm. she might as well have said that about all the other 10 languages let me say this correction all the other nine languages minus english in south africa she might as well have said that about venda she might as well have said that about Tsonga. might as well have said that about zulu Tswana, hey slapped a little bit of a kneecap bullet in the like uh, body of Sesotho she might as well have said that because those languages are also similarly not spoken in very many other parts of the world very many other parts of the world don't nobody know what Sabona even means but South Africans will always know it because there is no way under heaven that my daughter would ever never get what in the world I'm saying when I say come here come here so my cunt at least that minimum thing mm. there are people who pride themselves in their culture so much that when you speak to smack about them it's like where do you come from oh ignoramus indeed um, the ignoramus in question is Charlize Theron but I cannot say that she's sitting in her incredible incendiary agenda all by her lonesome she's sitting in there with other gentrified South Africans so the Buramach in South Africa that's all upset at Charlize Theron for mocking Afrikaans I'm gonna say shut up you two Buramach Literally keep quiet because all of your anger and all of the fury that you have burning out of your hair follicles against Charlize Theron for mocking your language is the fury I feel about you chilling in your gentrified churches thinking that the struggle of Christian persecution in black communities where witches are running rampant flying on broomsticks is not a real and an alive issue of I don't know the body of Christ yeah which some of y'all claim to be a part of yet yeah, sitting in your elevated positions aren't you in these uncomfortable dirty South African streets you thoroughly imagine you can look at me like a woman suffering with kwashioko in some neglected part of Africa that Westerners are wagging their heads concerning and then going on to turn on some stupid forgettable television show like generations you think you can ignore me because what I'm going through is apparently a black issue except a Budamach guys you're not the only ones out here doing this incredible incendiary thing mmm other people doing it are black people believe it or not you they're chilling out looking like Penny Sparrow or Vicky Momberg with your racist countenance there are black folk that are properly racist against me too why because they're kind of gentrified so violently gentrified they are that they're spiritual coconuts essentially ones who imagined themselves 100% absolved from the tyranny and the sorrow of a very tactless, averse, and comfortably egotistical witchcraft. Okay, I'm gonna like put a sock and a damper in that thing in my body. You know why? Because guess what? I am Buddha Mark of South Africa that can't stand Charlize Theron now. And guess what? I am gentrified rando black people of South Africa that can't stand Charlize Theron now. Mmm. I am a woman that was born in a middle income family to a point where I could hang out with a couple of the boomerang without making them uncomfortable. Yeah. I'm the kind of black person, or at least I come from a history of being the kind of black person. Yes, indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's you late. Get a leave, get a leave, get a leave. That could have easily hung out among white people without making them feel sorry for her. I was the kind of black person that could cause a white girl to be jealous of her. Mmm. Kind of black girl to make a white chick compete in the office. Mmm. Kind of black girl to make a white chick be like, why is she wearing that? Oh my goodness. Why? Because she got beef. Why? Because she can afford to have beef. Why? Because I was that gentrified. Mmm. Yet now today, I got some black folk looking at me like some poor a horn of Africa, Kwashioko having child, suffering like no man's business. That really, frankly, after you trickle one little tear down your eye and say, Ach, a shame, does nie rech die dung that is happening down here in die strata. You then move on and watch Generations, if that's still a thing. Ooh, as in, Zans. 
South Africa Lebodile. Substantial Titan. You are rotten. Yes, you are rotten. You are rotten in a way that, frankly, I feel as if though Charlize Theron has got an excuse. You know why? Because she's been sitting... Uh, yes, I did burp. I get to do that. In America, for like, what, three decades? How long she's been there? We debate. I can, I can see why Charlize Theron would totally forget where in the world and the heaven she come from. Uh, she's been there for literally too long. And when you hang out in a country that is that crazy, especially in an industry more crazy than the country, you're not going to remember your roots, even in the slightest. You're going to act a complete buffoon to a point where we're going to disown you entirely as a country. Mm. Well, black people, ever since you came out of apartheid, you were like, mm, I'm out of apartheid. So then what you did was like make like white people in the days of apartheid um act as if though your country is not in shambles act as if though you're totally not unacceptable act as if though there's not like a child that's your daughter's age that should not be going through what they're going through given that you're a mother they can relate with the sorrow of a child really just struggling to eat every single day acting as if those aren't a freak to suit mm. like a huna botata in your backyard yeah you probably made like white people in the days of apartheid eh? Happy to ignore all the wars in Soweto and everything, hey? Everybody out here in Google Earth are having such a hard time, but I'm not doing it. Why? Because I'm chilling and I'm Tsonga. Except it wasn't even Tsonga back then, whatever its name was, before it got all, like, I don't know, given a black name and stuff. Mm. You're acting like an ignorant white lady that really does not want to see all the butchering of black kids all the butchering of black daddies and black brothers and black mothers um and you just gonna like act and pretend as if your country's not totally out of hand that your government is just frankly just crazy they are always vomiting but no one is taking them to the doctor you know insofar as you're ensconced by the laws that entirely disenfranchise a whole chunk of other human beings you're gonna act like that's not a thing even though your conscience is beating you down like a pinata you're gonna pretend a white lady chilling in a suburb somewhere in south africa in the days of apartheid that there aren't a whole section literally the majority of the country just suffering because your government chose you to per to prefer to favor because your government made a decision that she was just like the better person aren't you in these streets but now fast forward all of these uncomfortable years down the line mm. and deal with the fact that now you're walking like staring straight at you in the odd eye maybe even the illuminati eye because you're like that one eye symbolism gangster into secret societies mm. that there's like a whole bunch of calamitous freaks killing the country it's so unsustainable that frankly in the absence of you derailing this systematic oppression you're never going to join the olympics nobody's going to allow you to belong to international bodies that ally with each other so everybody can get like trade and industry done you're never going to be respected as a country you're gonna be a pariah like north korea you're gonna be sanctioned like no man's business so frankly this apartheid thing can't carry on mm. this thighty thing this apartheid uh thing in my body that you're all doing aren't you in these streets he acting like it's not the a rector, thing the no that's, that's gotta, gotta stop the the rector, keep quiet carabo right? keep quiet um, nobody yeah, wants to th hear you thank you mm it's unsustainable south africa just like putting that out there okay black folk you are literally like the complacent white folk of apartheid south africa that we're not really entirely content with everybody being beaten to a pulp just because of their skin color but guess what it just so happened to be born really lucky because i'm white and so really and truly i'm sorry blackies it's gonna be a rough moment for you but my kids get to have proper education i'm sorry that your child can only learn how to make wood and how to like bake a pancake mm. that's the situation as you're in these uneasy streets of ours and so given that black people have made themselves like white folk and like you know apartheid south africa um just exactly what happened in apartheid south africa is exactly gonna happen also when whatever you want to call this particular south africa we shall call it apartheid volume 2.0 because this time around instead of it being white people oppressing everybody it's a bunch of gentrified blanks um what you're doing is unsustainable and everybody's just kind of setting it out mm, they're naive trying to ignore that it's not okay to not be part of the olympics they're naive thinking that it's like totally okay to have other countries refuse to trade with us i mean it's all right that some of the richest men in the country have got their accounts frozen because of sanctions from other nations really and truly it's okay for us to be like north korea 
acting like a little bit of a pariah, pretending that all we can do is little anti-continental or multi-continental or post contour whatever those ballistic missiles that you can keep on throwing them over the like you know oceans of south korea and have america give you grief and you be proud because at least you've got vladimir putin on your side yeah because you still got vladimir on your side don't you mm. yeah till it gets to a point where everybody's just kind of wagging their heads on some what's happening in south africa yeah when you grab entire viable human beings and then you just make them entirely poverty stricken i'm sorry you've created another group areas act out here in these streets don't you see mm. the fact that i am now the gawked at kwashioko victim it's a travesty, quite the abomination. A nation that's trying to grow economically, yes, um, is all these years down the line still regarded as nothing but an emerging market. I'm sorry, when exactly are you going to pop out entirely fully like a baby that's being born? Imagine you giving birth as a woman and your baby's like constantly just emerging. Like labor pains be out here rocking into 24 hours and you're still a baby that's emerging. On that day, everybody's in danger. Mm-hmm. The baby might might just die just trying to come out of the belly so she might the mother just bleed out trying to give birth to this emerging baby so africa has been an emerging market for literally what three decades now i'm sorry i believe the baby is gonna asphyxiate midway birth canal and so too will the mother pass away from just too much freaking pain yeah mm. The country's dying because its economy is going absolutely nowhere. Uh, and the reason why it's going nowhere is because you've gone in and grabbed some of your biggest and brightest employees in corporate South Africa and made them kwashioko ridden little babies in the Horn of Africa that can't get enough protein fast enough. Yes, um, not sustainable. It's not sustainable, uh, but you're gonna sit there like a, a suburban white girl in the days of apartheid, albeit being very uncomfortable with Hector Peterson passing away and everything. Uh, but at least you're white and you know your little brother's not gonna die <laughs> until you can't partake in the Olympics. Mm. What have you done? What have you done? Like Ninzen, South Africa. What under heaven have you done? You've literally made like Charlize Theron, except without even going to America. Everybody can get why she's become so dumbed down. But what's going on with you still hanging out in this backyard? Not really sure. Not really sure. Everywhere I've ever gone to complain in South Africa, people ignore me. Like I'm some uncomfortable and easy, odd little itchy thing that you just have to wait a couple of days and put a little bit of, I don't know, uh, carbon, what do you call that thing in my body? Uh, that oxidating stuff that burns your wounds until they're clean um yeah you're gonna put that on your little itchy uh mosquito bite and it's gonna go away so i'm a mosquito bite now that's what's good oh apparently i'm just gonna go away i don't know how i feel about being reduced to a mere mosquito bite but people just think i'm gonna go away except i'm the kind of mosquito bite that gives you malaria so whoopsie i'm deadly ha ha you can't ignore that now can you Mm. Turns out the thing you're turning a blind eye to is an entire metastasizing malignant cancer. It is not benign. It is a malignant and it is spreading at a violent rate. It has metastasized to most of the organs of the body and but for a miracle from on high where, I don't know, supernatural healing can make an entire terminal cancer regress. Ain't nobody coming out of this alive? You be thinking I'm alone in this? Uh, ha, ha, ha. Hmm. I feel as if those things are hilarious. I am too smart to be unemployed. I am too smart to be ransacked by a perpetuating state of psychosis on the part of South African witches who imagine they can continue to be the cancer in the country out of E, cause all of this like random volume 2.0 of apartheid, and then not have the nation just kind of face an entire devastating dystopia or, I don't know, repent. Mm. Zan's a freak to suit, just like the Buddha Mach that's very upset at Charlize Theron. I'm upset at you. Who do you think you are? Thinking that just because I am a minority language on a planet full of so many other languages that one day I'm gonna be extinct and so you're gonna be able to quickly just forget about me despite being rooted in where I come from? Like what in the world? Charlize Theron is an Afrikaner. Do you understand? And she out here mocking the Buddha Mach and their language and I'm like, yeah, Zen. Charlize Theron Volume 2.0, South Africa. I might be 
one little minority out of here, black woman, everybody out here in these streets ignoring us anyway all over the planet. But I am so rooted in your like history, in your foundation that I'm not going anywhere. Just like Zulu is not going anywhere. Just like Zwana is not going anywhere. Just like Venta is not going anywhere, whether or not there are 44 people speaking it. Because there will always be somebody proliferating this particular agenda. Yeah, you are a just conglomerate. The Bible. Here in last the scriptures, let me teach you one or two, perhaps ten things. Given that you've emptied your minds with all of your yoga and your transcendental meditation, and so therefore there's nothing in there, allow me to then fill it with God's word. It is written therein that narrow is the road that leads to life and few people find it. So if I am severely outnumbered, honey, I am doing something right. Because I'm among the few people at your in these uncomfortable streets going to heaven while you're going to hell and hell is uncomfortable for all of eternity you are like burning so frankly i don't even have one up on you i've got however many like steps it takes to get up to heaven up on you yet you be out you thinking you can exsanguinate me drain me out like blood because you is a vampire dream on dream i just feel as if the heart wants you enter into back to life back to reality you cannot just extinguish such a burning fire as I and anticipate that God is not going to sink your whole ship because he's always been about the minority as yes, Noah and seven other people were the only one that went in an ark that entirely decimated the whole earth by being the only ones that survived. Mm. In the days of Noah, you can't ignore me, South Africa, and get away with this. I'm sorry. God is the God of the neglected, disregarded, marginalized, and abandoned. So no matter how many times I comment in South African channels, no matter how many times I try to speak to South African people, they thoroughly gaze at me like I'm a child suffering from gua shi or gore somewhere in the horn of Africa with a fly, like literally crawling on my eyeball and I can't even feel it. And you trickle a tear, just one little little tear down your eye and then you just move on mm. that's how the west looks at africa they look at our sorrow and every so often hook up humanitarian aid and then move on to watch another show and so luxurious is their status quo that they can also afford to like you know make men women women men boys girls girls boys they can afford to hook up unisex bathrooms where people really don't even have a say when they are suffering from post-traumatic stress from sexual harassment they can do the, all of these luxurious things because things are not falling apart around them so badly that every second child in their nation has gua shi or go or scurvy or rickets some kind of malnutrition there's no food and security so they can afford to look at us cry give us two little cents and then go on right ahead to get fat on mcdonald's mm. but then what when africans are doing that oh when africans chilling in ethiopia however that are kind of fat ethiopians are looking at other ethiopians like ooh, you with kwashiogo and the fly in your eye there's a fly remove it can't you feel it can't you feel it oh this is so uncomfortable and then goes on right ahead and turns on some old school archaic ethiopian television show that don't nobody know why is anybody still watching it anymore on that day, you're naive. Here in last the word, again, since you've emptied yourself with transcendental meditation, I will add some words in there that are healing, words of life instead of just like, you know, being empty, thanks to yoga or whatever. Mm. The Bible says if anybody does not provide for members of their own household, for their family, especially members of their own households, <laughs> listen to this. Give me a drum roll, somebody. Oh, except I'm so lonely, I don't have a drummer, so I guess I'll do one myself. You are worse than an infidel. And so basically entirely 100% disqualified according to the faith. So you're going to hell, South Africa, for leaving me in this position. I'm just putting it out there. If at all you have happened upon me, oh father mother in my country, mm, and ignored me, you're literally going to hell. Because if anybody, that's what the Bible says, does not provide for his family, especially members of his own household, they're worse than an infidel. You're disqualified according to the faith. You're a whitewashed tomb. You're like those randos in the book of Jude that are like clouds without rain. You are going to say to the Lord one day in Matthew 7 as it is written, Lord, Lord, did I not prophesy in your name? In your name did many mighty miracles and in your name cast out many demons. And God is going to tell you, depart from me, work of iniquity, I never knew you. Because when I was hungry, you didn't give me food. When I was naked, you didn't give me clothes. When I was thirsty, you didn't give me drink. When I was in prison and sick, you didn't worship. You didn't come and, and visit me. 
I'm sorry, you call yourself a Christian. Oh, why? Because you're in church every Sunday. Yeah, God is able. And all that jazz. But the moment you happen upon a really, truly struggling, suffering saint, you are your passing people shade. <laughs> Guess who you are, South Africans? Chilling in churches, aware of the sorrow in the nation, but doing nothing about it? Mmm. Ananias and Sapphira. You be out there thinking you're giving God your full worship, but you ain't. You be out there claiming to give the Lord all that you must, but you ain't. You are in a position to support and serve. He who or she who is yet another sister in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's praise Ricky Demofat. Mm. Uh, but you are literally aware of somebody suffering violently when you have got it in your position to do something about it and you don't? And you don't? Kimo, I'm busy under attack like no man's business from some vulture, a creep of sorts, a little antelope, I don't know, it is an animal, a gorilla, let it burn. In America, been crying, been lamenting for a minute, but you're full of spite, and, and like you're looking at me on some red or auto fell like I'm... Here and last, the fruit of the sinful nature yet again, you who are perpetually doing some other form of spirituality other than Christianity, let me fill you with the word of God so maybe you might be healed. Um, in the book of God, in Galatians, it is written that spite, that malicious thing that you're doing, mm, it's a fruit of the sinful nature. And the fruit of the sinful nature, guys, guess what? We're born with it quite naturally. Um, we gravitate towards it. And so therefore, if you are born again, Oh, that's what's good. You ought not to be walking in these fruits. And so since we will know you by your fruit, and if you're still walking in spite and mal malice and random, strange, little, odd, funny, violent intentions, you're not saved. The Bible says test yourself to see if whether or not you're in the born-again religion. If you're not, better get saved. Who knows, lest you should fail the test. You will know them by their fruit. You must always love one another. Take care of them. People's are in these streets, especially those that are of the household of faith. So if you are busy disregarding especially Christians, as Christians, you're not born again. You literally are not born again. If you are spitefully trying to come up against a Christian, you're not born again. But you see, you don't got to help a sister girl. You know, you don't understand, but you're going to have to understand. You don't have to help me out. Y'all need to understand that in being absent of true Christianity, God going to help me at your expense. Uh -uh. Think about Esther, for instance. Hmm? Let's go and grab Esther out of these scriptures and just walk at this lovely young lady that went and married a Persian king and then thought that she had arrived and so therefore she does not need anymore to do Esther things. Mm. She imagined she was no longer a Hebrew but a Persian. I'm sorry, girl. You're always going to be a Hebrew. But if you're one of those like lukewarm Hebrews, what's going to happen, oh lukewarm, is that when judgment falls on the uh, Persians and all the other random surrounding nations that are all up in violent against the Jews. You're going to struggle too. When the Lord finally delivers the Jews, he will deliver them out of the hands of everybody that lay complacent, just kind of walking in an ecosystem doing nothing. That is why I have no fear in my heart. Matter of South Africa, you got to be told where to get off, okay? Because you are looking at some of the most persecuted people in South Africa and you're doing nothing, but you're chilling in churches. You know what you're like. You are exactly like Esther, chilling inside the Queen's courtyard and you are walking at your uncle and your uncle's fellow man as oh shame you don't get to be in the king's palace mm. you're literally looking at mordecai like a quashi your horse suffering rando in the horn of africa as a westerner like proper you're you're looking at south africa as Charlize Theron currently the way that she looks at us now we debate when about talk about being only better now that she can speak with that wham wham american accent of course where Charlize Theron where she is from because she's literally chilling in the Persian castle of King Xerxes. Oh, dude, see Esther. Go out to Housie's house. Mm. And she is thoroughly out here in these uneasy streets of ours, imaginative that she can diss South Africans, South Africans of which she is literally from their camp. Kiliwur. Okay, Lanko Lankalokai. And then go on right ahead and mock Africans. Yeah, mock Africans just like that. And you're just hanging out. Mm. That was Esther. Charlize Theron totally reminds me of Esther, but the kind that does not repent. That's what's good. Yeah, Esther, be out here dealing with Mordecai. Mordecai of which is who? Her uncle. So she is more sutured to Mordecai than she ever can uh, by Bland. That's once again. 
to Xerxes. Xerxes she married into, so Xerxes qualifies as water. Mordecai's Aja being blood. Mm, so you are all the Hebrews, blood. Because that is where the chick comes from. She's a Hebrew. Just one that kind of can't fit into the Persian camp. But she's a Hebrew. Is that what happened with them colored chicks in the days of apartheid that looked white and so they could pass for white? Like Kim Engelbrecht would have been the kind of colored chick in the days of apartheid to fit in to Mahoa. To this day, she's busy acting in America because she can pass that well for a, a, a white chick. She's busy acting for the flesh or acted in the flesh as like a, a, the white wife of some rando. Mm. But we all know that Kim Engelbrecht is a colored girl. But she's one of those super light colored girls with light eyes and smooth hair that she can look white she can pass for white so in the days of apartheid she might have you know dodged a bullet of oppression by just pretending that she's white mm. Charlize Theron is like that kind of South African she asked you passing for an American and so if don't nobody know that she's from South Africa she can just get away with murder and when then they find themselves in the other camp they forget that their blood is actually a particular Esther was like a Charlize Theron hanging out in Persia she could fit for a Persian girl, even though she was a Hebrew. She didn't have that typical Jewish look, whatever in the heaven it even looks like. She just looked like the Arabs out here in Persia. That was that was Esther. Her people, the Jews, were about to get massacred by some random plotter and schemer by the name of Haman, who literally sent out a decree to get all them Jews killed. That's what's good. They were facing extinction, annihilation, God's people, the ones that he's gathering for himself as a people, the ones through whom he is going to proliferate, I don't know, Jesus Christ and the legacy of born againness, eh? Salvation through them. And here was this guy trying to extinct them from the face of the earth. Look at that. Haman. Woo! aren't you naive mm. however all that naivety you think god is not looking at it from the sky on some ways do you seriously think that the god of the universe the creator the one who made you and me the one who like your atoms basically honor him they respect him they worship him the very atoms in your body without which you would not even be in existence yet they worship him even though you as an individual or you probably think that this god ain't got no control over some plotting scheming rando arabic man that are in these streets trying to neutralize the hebrews of course he was naive from the get-go same way that you are entirely naive south africa to think you can ignore a true christian amidst all of your lukewarm gangsters and have the lord not choose me over literally all of you all of you have the lord not choose me over all of you me and others like me you are naive you are about to be sanctioned you are about to not be able to participate in the olympics because you proper think you can segregate a people group and have the lord god almighty from on high not cause your country to basically just cease to grow due to that body you won't let my people go you are just making like pharaoh about to lose some kids <laughs> Freak. You are playing, no, yeah? You are full of joke. You are hilarious, no? And I just feel as if the one and Trevor Noah sit around in America and make joke because you are funny. You are exhaustingly funny. You are tiring, eh? But I'm going to exhaust you out of exhaustion. You will eventually have a lot of energy by the time I'm done with you, eh? You will have it, Marco. Understand it. Eh, oh, disturbingly disgusting South African. I'm not doing it, eh? You think you can ignore me and have the Lord God Almighty just deal with me, die, you know? I am precious. And I'm spreading the true gospel. And you sit in over there and you're comfortable, cushy chair, and you think you're good, eh? Yeah? Esther, God will handle you for thinking that you can ignore Mordecai. Anyway, just like my cat fighting outside and I'm not going to do anything about it because I'm talking over here, I'm too busy. I can not going to focus on it. I'm going to be in South Africa. Mzansa Freak, chill. Season desserts, if you like a life thing, take a breather, a chill pill, shine. Bloma. Your eyes are bloodshot. Yeah, you need to get some rest. Go get some rest. Come back and listen to the rest of this message tomorrow. Then when you're sober and well rested, you might just do a better thing. But understand, absent of doing that better thing, help for the Jews is going to come from some other place if not from you. But when it does come, you are going to fall with all the other enemies of God while we celebrate and eulalate as the Jews. Hmm. Niangul. Uh huh. Haman hooks up this like whole decree to kill the Jews. Mordecai goes to Esther on some girl. There's a problem. 
there was a dude that tried to thoroughly wants to kill the Jews and like he don't make no sense and then it's just like ooh, uh -huh, ooh, uh -huh, ooh, uh -huh. making like an Ethiopian looking at yet another Ethiopian making like a fat Ethiopian looking at another skinny Ethiopian suffering from Kwashiorkor core like uh, fine so you're from Ethiopia but I've got food and you don't and I'm really sorry that you don't have food but if I try to get food all of those like randos at the Tigray region blocking food aid from coming through they're gonna kill me so I'm sorry <laughs> is that what we're doing I'm sorry you're gonna die when ultimately the Kwashioko kid is given aid and you do nothing about it because it is going to be a war effort that is going to bring that food through and anyone standing in the way he's gonna die listen here Leicester yella Ananias and Safira you know what happens to Ananias and Safira they die yeah it's that basic however you're not bearing fruit too and like this time around instead of nasty that's what's good esther was out here pulling a stunt trying to tell mordecai that hey 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 look i'm married to a king okay <laughs> just in case you forgot <laughs> i'm a queen all right uh so uh there are rules there are rules in the palace we don't just dilly dally walk in just pounce in an ecosystem making like little brute unruly beasts with no manners the king gotta summon you to go and see him Mori Mord. so uh, I'm sorry that you guys are going through so much <laughs> it really does make life hard for me to think about the fact that my people that I am from mm-hmm yeah are about to die but this dude is gonna kill me if I just rock out without being summoned so mm, sorry can't do much about it Mordecai was like yeah Dota guys girls in please relax plum make like a flower girl chill mmm because herein lies the deal god almighty little lady is going to help us because he is god and we are wait for it his people not the persians no 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 not the surrounding nations not the moabites not the amalekites not even the the babylonians are the one people chosen by a holy god out of all of the earth he chose us in the center of the earth to be his people just us for now we're gonna deal with the gentiles later but for now we're the only ones that i have the apple of his eye on all of the earth so we might be vastly outnumbered i mean it's a thing like those that have been chosen by god will always be outnumbered one day in the future jesus christ is gonna get born and then he's going to have the scriptures written and it is going to state that narrow will always be the road that leads to life that few people find so god's people are always a small little remnant let's just put that out there so don't be looking at us looking all outnumbered and stuff and thinking that ain't nothing here coming to the party to pitch up for us because bottom line is we belong to the creator of the universe that chose a very small people group for his own possession and everybody else he was like i'm sorry no you are rejected so since he made the earth and everything you know i like from scratch ex nihilo yeah whether or not we're outnumbered is irrelevant given that the earth is like a circle to him that he drew it's a footstool that he puts his feet on chills maybe even plays soccer with it in heaven yeah he's he, he's he's up there he does whatever he pleases if he's hungry he doesn't even have to tell us but he made us and at the snap of a finger he can just say die or rise because he raises up kings and brings them low just like he rose up your little xerxes so make like a flower and blom since you are aware of the torah you know the word of god you know that he is omni everything and stuff so why are you actually acting like a queen when you are not being queenly relax blom make like a flower esther and blom mm. this god that has seen fit to choose only a remnant of all of earth's citizenship for his people will literally shake the whole planet just to rescue his people i mean in the future it's going to be clear it's going to be written in god's word that jerusalem will become a cup of trembling to the surrounding nations i mean they're out you're going to be trying to pounce on her but she is going to be a shaking thunderstorm that's going to ward everybody off even though she is just tiny isolated and everybody's going to be anti-semitic against her but it won't matter because she will always stand why because god said so so don't be looking at me being all outnumbered don't look at us hebrews out here in persia having a little bit of a smallness to ourselves bottom line is the battle is the lord's and the lord created this whole place he chose us and us only and so before we will get annihilated girl you will get annihilated 
forget about it. Like you are not gonna get to survive when God has chosen a people for his own possession and given that they worship him and they've chosen him and the only ones that are worshiping the one true God, he will literally decimate the entire planet on their behalf. You do remember he did that with Noah, right? Yeah, it's like him and just seven other people went into an ark and booyah, the whole earth was gone. All of it, except for the fish. Do you really wanna call God's bluff and pretend you're a fish? Since you're not part of the Hebrew camp, but you're also not part of the Persian camp. So you're basically like the only surviving life on earth that was left alone in the ocean. Oh, but are you going to call my bluff and try to act as if though God is going to have favor on you the way that he had favor on ocean life, on aquatic life during the flood. They're the only ones that didn't have to go nowhere to live. Do you seriously think that you're going to get to chill in Xerxes palace, go nowhere and still live? Because you remember that once upon a time you was a Hebrew. Okay, let me tell you a little something about once upon a time being a Hebrew. Once upon a time again in the future, uh, there's going to be this book written called Romans where the Lord is going to speak in Romans 11 about the people that were not his people being his people and those that were once his people not being his people. So the Lord God Almighty can thoroughly, if at all you don't obey him, yeah, just kind of unpeople you. So, I mean, unless you want to be unpeopled and so die in the flood with everybody else. You're gonna help us, but hey, 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 hey. Who knows if you've not been put in this position for such a time as this, I'm just saying. Like, don't be out here acting like a fool, Esther. And Esther snapped on events. She snapped on events. But South Africa be out here walking around like Esther. All of y'all gentrified freaks, that's what's good. Trying to tell us as though you might be an Ethiopian in the Tigray region and you're struggling to eat food, you've got kwashioko, and I'm a fat Ethiopian, but I'm too scared to like cross that border. Help for the Jews is going to come from some other place, if not from you. But when it comes, trouble will certainly not leave your camp. If you've not been put in this position for such a time as this, help for Karabo is going to come. Why? Because I'm on the narrow road that leads to life that few people find. And therefore, inherited eternal life. Therefore, among all of the earth's citizens that could not care less about God, I am gazed upon like the apple of his eye very gladly and lovingly, meaning that he is prepared to flood all of you just to save me. You literally gotta get that. Hi guys, what? The Lord God Almighty is going to send a deluge on South Africa and rescue just me. You must understand that. And by just me, I'm speaking about people like me. We are such a small number. We are such a vastly outnumbered remnant that when South Africa finally is endured through the judgment that is coming to the land, you're going to understand that your disregard of what I'm doing or who I am and the life br br blood in my veins alongside the breath of life in my lungs will not be taken out before the Lord will take yours out first. He will literally knock you to the ground if you're a professing Christian because you're going to be like Ananias and Sapphira or if you're a witch, you're just going to be one of them rando people that he strikes dead because you dared mess with the Ark of the Covenant or something. When you are sitting around as an occult practitioner, your death is kind of decreed in the sky and then the clouds already. But as a professing Christian, your fate is like that of Ananias and Sapphira. You will be rebuked following which you will cease to exist. Do you understand? Because of your nonchalant, apathetic, cavalier disposition concerning suffering Christians in South Africa due to the epidemic of witchcraft on the ground. We are being mowed to the ground. And those of y'all that are not suffering such severe witchcraft attacks for whatever reason, because that's the thing about God. He's the one that places Christians at the beck and call or at the doorstep of certain affliction that he might test them through it. Okay. And so not everybody is going to have the basically the occult in the country gawking at them lovingly and longingly like they are rather the apple of their eye i kid you not in some nefarious underhanded shoddy upside down fashion i am the apple of the occult's eye the lord has seen it fit to place me before some of the most evil men and women in the country and so they can't stop casting spells on me but i'm not the only person that the lord has seen to put seen fit to put in front of so many occult beasts there are many of us and the reason why the Lord has placed many of us before these devil worshippers is because there are so few true fiery Christians actually fighting the occult and the spiritual effects of what they do. That the few of us that there are, he is placing us before more of them than we can handle. Except we can, for he's given us power. It's written in God's word that the laborers are few, but the harvest is plentiful. So when you are a fervent, effervescent, prayerful Christian, God will always give you a job to deal with 
Uksweeper, Ugu Shangela, Tutlin. Rubbish being done by people in the occult. He will favor you and give you a spiritual gift to see what in the world they're doing. If you can use anyone, Lord, please use me. The Lord will send you because you are sendable. And when then you are the only person in a geographical location of a thousand kilometers in diameter, when you are the only sendable person, in an environment that is full of darkness you must understand you are going to be so inundated and inebriated abuse from the occult that the lord will listen to this rescue daniel rescue job and rescue and decimate the whole country for the sake of just three christians but it's written in god's word about his second coming that will the lord find faith on the earth when he returns when there are only one or two people in a mega church successfully praying against the cults in the church the covens the recruitment drives into witchcraft the watering down of the youth to fornicate when there are charms and spells operating and there are only three christians in a congregation of a thousand five hundred truly and successfully able to spot the occult for what it is is not going to continue to wear out those three believers who keep on trying to sound the alarm and no one is listening to them and he will take those only iron dome shield building over their churches christians out and leave you destitute butt naked at the mercy of a coven operating in a church that's what in the world happened with me at some baptist church in florida right here in south africa the last church i ever belonged to i was sent as some kind of olive branch to them and there was a whole thriving coven my listen to this the main pastor the second to him in charge and a whole bunch of young adults and some other older men and women were running a cult in the church where they were sacrificing the wombs of women in order to continue the church in its prosperity and i was the only person literally the only person that knew this saw this prayed against it these people were so recalcitrant and so stubborn that they allowed for my excommunication from that church instead of heeding what i had to say they accommodated my excommunication yeah no it might appear as if i got kicked out of the synagogues but what that rather was is that the lord was saying i'm sorry this is too much work for you my one christian you were sent there to open the eyes of many they refused to open their eyes they were stiff-necked and hard-hearted so you're gonna get taken out i spoke for five seconds if you don't listen god is not gonna insist you stay there he says in his word if they persecute you in one town flee to the next he says in his word it'll be a better day for on the day of judgment for the cities of sodom and gomorrah and for Sidon and tyre than for that town if you preach to them and they don't heed dust your feet off leave them alone the lord would never insist that an unwanted prophet or an unwanted evangelist or a priest stays in a hostile ecosystem it's just not safe and it is not uh, an, an enabling work environment if you know what i mean so god is going to take that prophet that has no honor in that ecosystem and move them somewhere else where they've got support where they've got help indeed it happened even with elijah it is written in god's word guy elijah and Zalla, that jezebel is out here trying to kill everybody and not jezebel is trying to kill saying may the gods deal with me ever so severely if by this time tomorrow elijah is not dead elijah goes and cries and says god take my life here it is that i've done this miracle on mount carmel and this woman is still trying to pursue me she has killed all of your prophets please take my life and god tells him through the angel of the lord get up and eat for your journey is still too great great besides there are seven thousand others that have not knelt to Baal. essentially the lord encourages them and says i've made you flee to the wilderness you will be fed, fed twice a day by the brooks and by the ravens who are going to bring you food and you're going to be drinking water from this particular brook sit out this particular drought and that crazy woman from a distance away from her until things simmer down until you can ultimately declare rain on the land or stop it etc and then once that brook ran out he sent elijah over to the widow at zarephath where he was continuously able to eat because her oil and her flour became bottomless due to elijah's presence in the environment long story short god always encourages these christians by saying get out and go somewhere else you will be respected and even if you are put in isolation or solitude for a season it is because where you were at is a place of hostility and you're not going to be safe in it however do not cry and say that you're alone and that jezebel has killed all the prophets of god no there are seven thousand others that have not knelt to Baal and they're still alive so there are others just like me but just like me they're in isolation and solitude fleeing from a country men that have persecuted them out of synagogues out of e that have persecuted them out of churches people that have stood in the gap for their churches and been cast out for being heretics being cast out for being too extreme being whatever they just a whole insensitive vibe i live in south africa do you understand this country is a butcher field by the occult it's a cesspool of darkness 
Do you understand? The occult is having a field day with Christians. And we're not, you are not Christians, but the world at large, the, the country at large. If at all, the occult is doing this nefarious thing in this country. There should be prophets all over the show, popping up in churches, raising the alarm, causing churches to repent that their prayers might be effective because they're righteous and so avail much. And also causing churches to fast and pray that the whole nation might be uh, ensconced. Instead, what's happening is that people are praying, but they're not being heard. Why? Because the prayers of who? The wicked are what? An abomination to Emmanuel. Therefore, the prayers at a church like Rhema, for instance, are entire abominable, but for one or two that are rising up to the heavens. I would know this because I used to belong to Rhema. I used to belong to Grace Bible Church and I would attend at Rhema in particular because it was in my neighborhood. Night vigils, do you understand? In, in other words, all night prayer. I would attend it and I would be there pretty much all night. So essentially, it's such a mega church as Rhema. When it has got an intercession team, all night praying, and there are people who actually rock up that belong to the congregation of Rhema to join in this all night prayer. And you can multiply the night all night prayer vigils Tako Rima by the country pretty much so all the churches in the country mega and small that have got such all night prayers dedicating in portions of those all night prayers the safety and the sanctity of the country we should not be where we're at buggers as a nation we should not be dealing with some politician that thoroughly wants to become, become the future president of the country that hates white people. Oh, Julius Malem, Agazingen, oh, busy, kill the boy, kill the farmer, but he one day wants to become the president of South Africa. We would not have such people dilly-dallying, speaking candidly on like platforms and podiums of the country and be taken seriously because South Africans would not be under such a frenzy and a trance so as to listen to occult presidents talking at the pulpit. Plus, men like Julius Malema would also not be getting invited to churches and called godly men. If at all, the all night prayers of Christians in mega churches and small churches actually were being heard. Well, all that, well, all, all that, which, all that, that activity told me, the activity that I was partaking in, where I was attending some of the uh, all night prayers, like, oh, Reima, no, is that these people are wasting time. And lo and behold, indeed, what do you do when, when you get to all night prayer, go busy, avant, where, ba, 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 sha, ta, 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 where in the Bible is that even allowable? The scriptures make it clear that you cannot be blurting out into tongues in the public congregation. So that was the first problem, because you don't know if at all there are occult practitioners literally planted in the intercessory team to counteract, counteract, um, what is this, God's tongues with demonic tongues. Because everybody's like, ba, 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 and there is no interpreter. That's the first thing. And then secondly, just the immorality. Immorality. The people praying. One time, go your now all night prayer thing. There was a lady there that was from my offices. We worked together. And I was pleased to see her there. And I was like, oh girl, at least we all get to pay pray together. She was there. That same woman was a witch. She is one of the colleagues that afflicted me with witchcraft. That the Lord showed me was involved in some satanic activity. So essentially, this chick was happy to attend all night prayer for a couple of hours, however long she was there for. Uh, but also every so often on a Tuesday evening, she would visit us on Goma. The prayers of the wicked are an abomination to Emmanuel. It is written in God's word that these people praise me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. That's what's good. So that chick was praising God with her lips to a point of literally uh, taking herself out of her way to drive to church and sit there for a couple of hours praying for a country. I mean, do you know how much sacrifice it takes to do that? That's what's good. It's a lot of energy. Yeah, she did all that, but she did not know God. What does the Bible have to say about such activity? Obedience is better than sacrifice. So you are better off not fasting, praying, and basically bending over backwards and breaking your, your neck. If at all, you are just staying away from fornication, staying away from witchcraft, basically trying to honor the Lord, trying to honor the Torah. That's what's good. That chick could not obey God in a very fundamental sense. She had two gods. She worshipped both the devil and God. She was straddling the fence in the worst way. But hey, how she would fast. Hey, how she would wake up at 3 a.m. and start up like any tongues. Hey, how she would even pitch up at an all-night praying vigil where it is that you will be exhausted on Sunday morning or on Saturday morning because you were praying all night from Friday evening up until Saturday morning. Morning. You you give all that sacrifice, Mara Obizika Satan. Like all of your works are filthy rags. That's what the Bible has to say. Obedience is better than sacrifice. You're better off not fasting, however, staying away from fornication. The Lord would have you much rather keep your garments clean than wear yourself out with religious activity. So all that that told me was that the church was basically teeming at the folds. 
at that intercessory praying session we were even standing in the gap for south africa all those years ago with people whose prayers are just hitting a ceiling so i was let's say out of a room full of 50 people all just praying all night long only my prayers and maybe the prayers of two other people in there were going up to heaven successfully being reaching the nostrils of god as a fragrance the rest of them were stench the rest of them were eradicatable and so when that when then that's the case do you think god is just going to wear out inebriate exhaust three christians out of 50 with just standing in the gap for a country whose professing christians are busy practicing witchcraft god is not going to sit that out he's not going to write it out he is not going to answer the prayers of those three christians on behalf of a nation that does not deserve that mercy he would much rather take those three christians out extract only them and flood everybody else will the lord find faith on the earth i don't know will the lord find faith in south africa you're sick